Hello, folks. I just want to talk and do a little summary of the Ten Commandments. A lot of people have this mistaken thought, especially Christians, that when Jesus came, the Ten Commandments no longer had to be followed and were no longer valid. They figured, well, Jesus died for us. We don't have to worry about them if we break them. Oh, well, no. Jesus himself even said the Ten Commandments, he didn't come to replace them or eliminate them. He came to fulfill them. Now, what does fulfill mean? It means to show that they could be done, to, to do them, to fulfill them. And we're asked to do that as well. Now, a lot of people, here's another myth, a lot of people think that the Ten Commandments were meant to subjugate man. No, they're not. They are meant to protect us and prevent us from being hurt. The single one that maybe some may say, well, um, he, he, God wants us to have no other gods. Think of all, about it as an, a marriage arrangement. God wants us to have him only as, as our God. Just as a husband would want his wife only to have one husband, or vice versa. Uh, a wife would want her husband only to have one wife. Same as with God. He wants all our love, not to be divided. So he says, do not have other gods besides me. Funny thing is, we can make all kinds of things our God. And he talks about it here. Do not make an idol for yourself, whether in the shape of anything in the heaven above or on, on the earth below or in the waters and under the earth. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. It's funny. We don't just make idols. We make things our idols that already exist. Some people will make money their idols. Some people will make possessions their idols. Some people will even make other people their idols. Celebrities become idols as well. Um, some people will make physical possessions like uh, houses and uh, um, vehicles and things as an idol to be proud of and shown off and practically worshipped. Um, we're not supposed to do that. Just keep our worship to God. Now, next. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God, because the Lord will punish anyone who misuses his name. How do we misuse his name? We can make false vows. Now, a vow is something that is to say you are saying the truth. Uh, a lot of people in, in courts will use a Bible and will uh, the, the person in the court will ask the person to lay their hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Now, if you're swearing on that Bible and you're not going to tell the truth, you're making a false vow over the word of God. Another way to word it is, it says in, in, the, in the book, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If someone asks you a question, let it be either yes or no. Um, if someone asks you for help and you say yes, and then don't, you're breaking that vow. There, there's lots of ways to break vows. Um, 
also misusing the name. Just saying, oh my, blank, is misusing the name. Or just using and saying out the name of the sun. Blank. I'm tired of this. Whatever. That's misusing the name of God. There's lots of ways to misuse the name of God. And that hurts God. I mean, you wouldn't like someone swearing by your name. Or saying, blank, so-and-so. And then he says, remember to dedicate the Sabbath day. Now, the reason God asks us to, to have a Sabbath and this is something that's been under contention for centuries, over a thousand years. What is the Sabbath day? It depends on which version of a calendar you look at. Um, some calendars, uh, older ones, list Friday as the end of the week. The Jews look at Friday as the end of the week. That's their Sabbath. And then there are others that say, no, Saturday is the end of the week. And so they'll have Saturday as their Sabbath. And if you look at some really old calendars, I'm talking way back, thousands of years, the weekends were literally the end of the week. Saturday and Sunday, and so Sunday then is shown at the end. And and modern times, um, Saturday has become the end, but a long time ago, Sunday was at the end. It depends where your culture was. They had different calendars, and that's why it became confusing at times. Um, but one thing was for sure, they had seven days throughout the week. Anyway, um, the reason why God wants us to have a Sabbath day or a day of rest is because our bodies, our, our uh, physical bodies, need time to recover from hard work. If you do a lot of hard work and never rest, over time your body becomes run down and you can be injured. So having a day of rest, letting your body recover, uh, that makes sense. It sounds like a good idea. It, it's protective. Honor your father and your mother so that you may have long life and in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Um, okay, that's a no-brainer. Think of it this way. If you don't honor your parents... And so you meet someone that you love and, and you have a family and you're not honoring your parents. You are your children's role model. And if they see you not honoring your parents, um, guess what? They're, they're going to copy you. Children copy their parents. So then they're going to dishonor you. Do you really want that? I know a lot of people who complain over how disrespectful their kids are. Meanwhile, they're bad-mouthing their own relatives and, and their parents. Well, guess what? It's happening back at you. That's, that's, that's why we're supposed to honor our parents. Do not murder. No-brainer. Um, even, even secular governments recognize that. You murder someone, you get executed in, in most states in the U.S. And uh, let's be honest, it's wrong. The only one who has the right to take a person's life is God. And, and it's not out of maliciousness. It's because our days are over. Our number of days have, have ended. Um, we don't know why we die. It, it could be because our bodies have become worn down. Or who knows? It's a mystery to us. People are killed in accidents. Well, maybe if they hadn't, something terrible worse would have happened. We don't know. It's all a mystery to us. But one thing is for certain. We do not have the right to take another person's life. That's, that's for God. 
It's forbidden. I mean, how would you like it if someone came and murdered your, your wife or your husband or your kid? So do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Now, here is one a lot of people like to argue about. They say, well, how is that going to hurt anyone? It's only between the two. Uh, if you're married, it'll hurt your spouse. If you, you go and have an uh, uh, adulterous relationship. Or if you're neither of you are married and, and you live or, or have uh, an adulterous affair. If one loves the other more than the other loves that person back and then leaves them. The person who is left, they can be heartbroken. And, and uh, it's, it hurts. It, it can be just as painful as physical injury. It's, it's breaking the heart and the spirit of that person. So don't commit adultery. Plus, a lot of things can come out of adultery, especially if you run around and have multiple partners. You could end up with uh, sexually transmitted disease. Or, or you can create a child that then, if you, if you take off and leave the a mother alone with a child, uh, that child's going to suffer. So don't commit adultery. Uh, honor the marriage vows. If you, if you really love someone, honor the marriage vows. Don't get involved before you're actually married. And don't marry frivolously. Make sure the person you marry is the right person for you. That you can say, looking at that person, yes, I could spend the rest of my life with this person. Don't go by looks. Go by the personality. Because if, if I mean, looks pass. They fade. But what's in the heart, what's up here, and familiarity, uh, um, familiar likes, similar likes, whatever you want to call it, that lasts forever. Um, so so uh, uh, don't commit adultery. And if you really do love someone, if you truly love someone, you'll be willing to wait until you're married and stay married. If you, if you get married and, and get divorced and then remarry, you're committing adultery because you only have one marriage. You only have one half of you. And if you've left that half, you're not supposed to remarry. That's adultery. And you also cause the other person to commit adultery, even if they never had a previous relationship or, or had remained a virgin. You're causing them to commit adultery because they're married to someone who had already been married, which is adulterous. Um, do not steal. No brainer. How would you like it if someone stole from you? You wouldn't like it. So so don't steal from others. It's wrong. It goes against the nature of, of what we're supposed to do. Uh, love our neighbors as ourselves. Are you going to steal from someone that you actually love? Um, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Uh, our neighbor, when they're talking about false testimony against our neighbor, our neighbor is everyone. And it's a good idea not to do that. Because if you give false testimony, testimony or lie and you get found out, guess what? No one's going to trust you again. You'll be known as a liar. So you're protecting your own honor by not giving false testimony or lying. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female slave, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to wish you had something like that person. Just don't want to have what that person actually has. Because that can plant the seed of sin in, in your heart. Uh, if you covet a person's wife, that plants in the seed of your heart the thoughts of maybe committing adultery, which could hurt that person. If you covet a person's object that maybe they have a, a nice uh, uh, item in, in their yard and covet it, it could plant the seed of, of envy and, and thoughts of taking that item. 
it, it's it's a safety precaution. Don't covet. Because coveting can lead to further sin. Anyway, that's just a, a brief explanation. And as you you can see, when, when I explain those laws, they're not meant to oppress us. They're meant to protect us. Big difference. It's like saying to your kid, don't go run out of the street. You might get run over by a car. You're not telling them or making that rule to oppress the child. You're doing it to protect them. And that is what these Ten Commandments are meant to do. They're meant to protect us. Don't forget that. Keep that in your heart. Think about it. Meditate on it. And, and meditate on the Ten Commandments. They're not as difficult to follow if you really think about what they are trying to tell us to do. Uh, if you think about them as oppressive, then yeah, you're going to want to uh, disobey them. But if you think of them instead as, hey, this is a way to keep me safe, maybe they might be a little bit easier to follow. Think about that. Take the time. Look them over. Meditate on them. Look at what they are actually saying. Look at what those Ten Commandments actually offer you. Protection. That's what the Ten Commandments are about. Anyway, I hope this helps you to understand and appreciate the need to keep the Ten Commandments. Like I said, Jesus himself said, he did not come here to abolish the commandments or the law. He came to fulfill it, to be the perfect example of how he wants us to be. He fulfilled the commandments. He, he followed them. He's just asking us as Christians, and Christians mean Christian means follower of Christ. He just wants us to follow what he himself did, which was obey the commandments. Anyway, enough for now. I hope that helps you to understand that the commandments are actually a way to protect us and God's way of showing his love for us. I hope that helps. Bye for now.